Hello there and welcome to the 13th edition of Career Stories. I'm really pleased to have Karen Tisdale here today. So hi Karen, thank you for joining. I'm so excited to speak to you. It's so uh, lovely to speak to you for the first time and we're doing it on a stage in front of everybody. I know, it's amazing, isn't it? I've got my manly t-shirt on, I've got my Sydney mug, <laughs> so it's all going on here. We've got Ashley Leeds joining us. How much is it? Oh, here he is. And there he is, Ashley. Morning, Ashley. Thanks for joining. I love your podcast episode with him, by the way. Oh, thank you. It was really cool, actually. And that shows the power of LinkedIn because one of the audience who I'd never met then messaged me and introduced me to someone at a university to go and talk to. So it's amazing. You kind of go on these things and who knows what's going to happen. So with that in mind, anyone that's watching, please do let us know that you're here, where you're joining from, ask any questions, share your experience in the comments. I know we've got quite a big sign up today for for now. So we were just talking before that we used to get a couple of hundred people on these uh, in these shows during the pandemic. But it's really dropped down, hasn't it, Karen? It has. But you were quite thrilled that we got just under 100. I was like, I hope we get 100. We got we we're on 100 this morning. So. <laughs> Well, we won 100 this we morning. We won 100 this morning. 96 yesterday, and we crossed yeah. 100 people we did. signed up. Yeah. Oh, no. yeah uh, okay. So, Ooh. Ashley's saying, what time do you call this? Well, yeah, yeah, early, Ashley. <laughs> 7 right. for me, 7 a.m. 6 p.m. by us, 6 p.m. by and, us. And friends. the lift that keeps giving. Yeah, so your weekend's starting, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Excellent. So, um, Karen and I connected in November 2021. I can't remember exactly. It was probably through John Asperian. Um, We had loads of chat messages Mm -hmm. and I was really pleased when I got this connection request from Karen because I had seen all this stuff that she doesn't connect outside Australia. And I'm like, oh, my God, I've got an invite. It's really cool. (laughs) So I was very excited. Um, But the purpose of these lives for anyone that's not seen one before, I'm really interested in people's career stories. And I know Karen is also and really what they do, why they do it. And the aim is just to give people tips really on their careers and how they can progress. So it may well be, given what we're talking about today, there's quite a lot of LinkedIn stuff going on. So here's a little bit about Karen, Um, LinkedIn profile writer, LinkedIn top voice, guest lecturer, and has had roles in recruitment, training, marketing, and advertising, copywriting. So let's just have a look at this company. Okay, so this is my husband. Copywriting is a bit of an oversell, can I say? That was like years Years. ago. That was that's my first fine. ever job writing job adverts for a newspaper. Okay, that's fine. That's 14 fine. years in recruitment, 14 years writing LinkedIn profiles. Okay, right. Okay. So let's first of all just start with this question. So why is it that you don't typically work or connect outside of Australia? Nothing like starting with the biggest question. <laughs> no one has ever asked me. Do you know all the podcast guest episodes I've had, like all of the talk- speaking events, People don't want to go near that question. In fact, they usually want to avoid that question. I'm like, can we talk about this? And they're like, no, no, wouldn't want to offend anybody. Let's not talk about that. Um, I don't think why is very interesting. I And there's a lot of different reasons why I don't connect globally. But I think the result of me not connecting globally is fascinating. Okay. Um, so what happens as a result of saying no more than yes? of picking a niche, choosing an industry, or for me, it was a country that you wanted to be known in, um, has just been incredible. And I really hope that it's something that everybody who joins today or or catches the replay will consider, is saying no more than yes, and just picking your niche, like thinking, who are the people I really want to be known for? And what's the, you know, what's the pond that they play in? Um, and how do I be that, let's keep going with the pond um, scenario, um, and how do I be that big fish in a little pond? So Australia, right, really small population, um, and then you take out of the population of people in Australia um, the people who are um, retired, so they're not using LinkedIn, and the people who are too young to use LinkedIn. So that just takes out most of our population, so our population shrunk even more. And then you take out of that the people who are going to be able to afford to pay me to write their LinkedIn profile, even yeah. smaller. Yeah. So the result of me only connecting with people who could be my clients or would know my potential clients, so picking a really small area. So um, with all due respect, if you're, um, and I know this sounds so wrong on so many levels, but if you're a truck driver in Australia, I'm probably not going to accept your invite to connect because, or I certainly wouldn't have done, 
Um, I don't think I've ever had an invite from a truck driver. If you're a truck driver <laughs> listening, feel free to send one. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like, I'm like, oh, do I connect with this person? Because it's about who they know and, and that's Yeah, yeah, yeah. You never know. And, yeah. Yeah. So, and maybe they can carry your content. But by saying no more than yes and picking a niche, this wonderful thing happens in that if you've got, say, 10,000 people in your industry that you really want to know, if you connect to 5,000 of them, the other 5,000 will want to connect with you because mm-hmm. they feel like they're seeing, you know, everybody's speaking about you. And go deep with your relationships, not wide and shallow. If you start becoming besties with somebody who's on the other side of the world, um, what's the likelihood that they're going to know a lot of people that you know? If you mm-hmm. pick a small pond, if you just say, I'm only going to, or I'm primarily going to connect with people who are in this industry primarily going to connect with people who are in this location you will know like 90 percent of that or at least 50 percent of that location and the other 50 percent will be sending an invite so yeah. when i'm talking to somebody who says i don't know if i want to pay 2000 australian um for you to write my linkedin profile like i don't know and i'm like that's cool um having a look at your profile i can see we know a few people in common um you know, these are three or four of your connections whose profiles I've written. You know, feel free to go and chat to them. That's, yeah. that's yeah. just so powerful. So if you're a job seeker and you actively searched, use the search tools on LinkedIn to actually search for who is in your industry and who is in that location and you built your network out with those people, your reputation would precede you. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's cool. And also you're just creating massive FOMO, aren't you? So people want to create, want to connect with you. Yeah, because they feel like, oh, my gosh, everybody's talking about Karen. Like, who is this Karen? You know, and so, you know, it it has this wonderful impact. And when I say go deep, not shallow, um, you know, I'm I'm equal parts people-focused and task-focused. Yeah. So part of why I decided not to connect globally is because, you know, I find people fascinating. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, I would spend all this time. So, you know, um, you know, uh, Ashley and I are both big fans of the piano guy. I mean, like, God, I love yeah. piano guy. Like, I'm such a big fan of his. And I'm, like, holding myself back from sending him an invite to connect because he's not a LinkedIn trainer. He doesn't play in that LinkedIn space, so like you do. So I can learn from you, which is why I sent you an invite to connect. You know, we can exchange information. But, yeah. you know, if you stay in your niche, if you sort of pick your pond, you know, you can become mm-hmm. such a big pond in it. In, in you know, you start exchanging messages, you get to know each other. And when you connect with somebody who's on the other side of the world or outside your industry, the moment you connect, you're more likely to see their posts in your feed yeah part of saying no more than yes means that my feed is filled with people who I can either learn from they could be my clients or they would yeah. know they could be my yeah. clients yeah and then you don't need to kind of curate your feed really do you because you're seeing people that you want to see in the first place absolutely yeah and absolutely. I love that Michael Pierce is here agreeing with me thank you Michael. Yeah, just seeing that Australian. <laughs> You know, there you go, excellent. And um, and Paul, my husband, is sat in the kitchen. There you go. So, <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's right. <laughs> excellent. Well okay, that's good. So yeah, I mean, yeah, I I totally get what you're saying. I think I I have connected with a f- not loads of people, but a few people in Australia. But mainly because I just think Australia is amazing. You know, being there for five days, so obviously I know so much about it. But um, <laughs> I guess that's the thing, isn't it? But I do have clients that move to Sydney as well, and I know we're connected. So I guess that's the thing as well, isn't it? Is maybe thinking about who they might know. So it, it could be someone in the UK, but they may be connected to loads of people in Sydney. Yeah, yeah. That who they know is so powerful, you know. And if you pick yeah. an industry, it's really easy. I mean, I picked a country, but you could apply it to an industry. It's yeah. really easy to get a name for yourself if you just try as much as you can to to go really narrow with who you're connecting with and deep yeah. narrow and deep there's no deep, yeah. you know collecting people you want to connect with people so you want to really build relationships and really exchange those messages yeah so do you i'm guessing you have the follow first thing set up on linkedin anyway so you get people following you rather than connecting 
I do, I do. And I've even got in my headline, I don't connect globally, and I still get invites from people overseas. Yeah. <laughs> it's quite hilarious, really. Um, yeah, oh, Ashley's saying, uh, hopefully our Australian friends will invite us to stay. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, um, Michael has had a call from a truck drive this morning. He wasn't on LinkedIn. <laughs> yeah, see, there you go. There you go. So it is about staying in your niche, you know. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Excellent. Okay, so let's go into your career then. So how, how did you start out in your career? Uh, well, I actually started um, waitressing. So, okay. <laughs> oh, so you can hardly call that a, a career. But um, my earliest roles were waitressing um, from a really, really, really young age, um, 14 and a half, um, single parent family, my dad left. And so I went out and started waitressing and I just loved talking with people. Mm. Or I learned to love talking with people. Initially, I was painfully shy, like, oh, my God, this is so embarrassing. But you had to interrupt people yeah. you know, to take their orders, and that was um, that was a really great experience. And then I, I've always loved words, so I started writing. I went to the UK um, for a year, stayed for four years. Um, so, wow. I know, so, yeah, as you do, right? Yeah. <laughs> and, um, and I started, uh, I worked for the Essex Chronicle. Okay. Um, I know, yeah, I was in Essex. Nice. I'd like to think I fitted in there. It's lots of partying and romping. I know, it was years ago. Can you imagine years ago? And so when was this, roughly? Just thinking, oh, how, gosh, where, uh, where 90, would I have been? 93, 94. Oh, so okay, yeah. You, you were probably in, what, primary school then? No, no, no. I was in. I was working in financial services in Prudential at that point in oh, Reading. Really? So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, wow, well, there you go. So, um, and so I, I wrote advertising and then got into recruitment when it came into Australia and recruitment okay. was where I really hit my stride. So I was in recruitment for 14 years. Yeah. Uh, absolutely loved it. Um, and I was really lucky to go on maternity leave right when the GFC had just hit. And I had seen, I've been on LinkedIn since 2005. So I was on LinkedIn um, getting really excited when we got 6 million people on LinkedIn. I was like, oh, my God, that's so many. <laughs> Can you imagine that? And, um, you know, and I could see that with LinkedIn and also with spotters fees, you know, more and more companies were when I left recruitment um, in 2010 to go on maternity leave. I could see that a lot of recruitment, a lot of companies were starting to incentivize their employees to find other staff for them and, mm -hmm. and stuff like that. And I just thought... This is going to, like, I just can't look in people's eyes and say, you know, hey, um, could you please buy somebody from me when if you just had a really good look on LinkedIn, you could find that person yourself, you know. Oh, so I just kind of fell out of love with recruitment or, or starting to yeah. went on maternity leave and just started, um, I initially started writing resumes and LinkedIn profiles and um, and then after a few years killed off the resume writing side and um, deleted a lot of that stuff from my profile and I'm now writing profiles and been doing that for 14 years. It'll be 15 years this October. I've been running my own business writing profiles and you've been in career coach nice. what 20 years, right? 20 years. Yeah. So yeah, I've been working for myself 20 years in July. Yeah. yeah. It's flown by. And we've had a similar trajectory. Really similar, in yeah. Because you, um, you were invited to do some, I heard you say on Ashley's podcast, I think you were invited to do, um, uh, like we'll do some career transition workshops and stuff like that, weren't you? Yeah. And I did yeah. The same. Yeah, yeah, so I did when that. I took redundancy from my financial services job, the outplacement company said, do you want to come work for us? And I didn't Sorry, even I'm heard about job, just Yeah, that's cool. Like I just yeah, you didn't even, up, so. hadn't even heard of outplacement. Sorry. No, and no. And I was much the, the same. I was like, so what's outplacement? And they were like, you know, you're writing resumes, you're doing LinkedIn. Yeah. We don't know what yeah. this LinkedIn thing is. And so, yeah, yeah amazing. This is, yeah, this is good. So Ashley's saying he started out in, hosp in hospitality. We should get all youngsters to do a stint in hospitality. It's great ground in so many transport skills. Now, I totally agree with that, Ashley. But so my son, this is quite topical. So he's 17. Now he has, his hair at the moment is totally multicoloured. He cannot get a job in hospitality because of his hair. Really? You know? Yeah. So it's mad, isn't it? Hair and, and no experience. But, you know, I think people just look at him and like, no. <laughs> But wow. he wants to work in the music industry. So, you know, he's kind of, he's, I guess he's dressed and acting like he's in the music industry, which doesn't help him get a job in retail or hospitality right now. In so frustrating. In conservative places. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. So he, he's starting to target um, 
more individual type places, but no luck so far. Yeah. Anyway, you need to go and find an indie cafe or something. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. We went to a good vegan cafe actually last week. You should go there. That's true. And they had coloured hair. So uh so John is saying it's always great to see Karen Action, one of my top LinkedIn people in Australia. Excellent. Which is very um, kind because we have some amazing people here in Australia and a huge amount of LinkedIn users here in Australia. Yeah. We're all part of yeah, John Asperian's um mastermind group. Excellent. Yeah, it's such a great group, isn't it? Um, and Jenny saying, after attending Karen's workshop, I learned how to improve my LinkedIn profile. Thank you. That's excellent to hear. Thank you. And going back to waitressing, I think you make a really good point. And I had Annette Richmond on from uh, New York a while ago, and she said the same thing. She was a total introvert and got a job in hospitality um, in, in a restaurant mm-hmm. just so that she could speak to people. Yeah. You don't kind of think of those kind of transferable skills, do you? I think people should think of it more, you know. Um, Mm. I really appreciate Jenny being here. And, um, you know, I never would have been able to run workshops and stand in front of groups if it wasn't for those early experiences of, and I I, like I can picture them like they were yesterday, although they were so many years ago, you know, of a big table um, and having to take their order. And, you know, and there's a whole table of people at a birthday party and they're all talking and I'm like I need to take their order right now because a big busload of people have just turned up and if I don't get their orders into the kitchen like the chef is going to start throwing knives at me again (laughs) you know and so you know so you've got to learn to kind of feel the room and and that and I think it's just life skills yeah yeah so how many how many orders could you remember of having to write down I don't know. I don't know. I'm pretty rubbish at that now. Yeah. I think I was pretty good. I think yeah. I was pretty good. But, um, yeah, we had a I, – I did waitressing in the UK and we had a, a chef that if I said, oh, you know, this person wants a gravy on the side, no, that is not how gravy gets served. <laughs> so I always felt like I was in between two yeah. parties, which I think was really interesting. Managing relationships. Managing relationships. And then as a recruiter, I was, you know, I'm managing my clients and my candidates as well. So, yeah, you know, so it's always being in between. Yeah. Okay. That's good. So, in terms of where you want to be in your career, I guess it's been changing, but have you always had a clear goal of where you want to be? Did you always want to be self employed? No, I didn't. No. No. And when I, when I decided, um, when I had this idea that I just couldn't let go, I, which wasn't even my idea, it was one of my girlfriend's ideas. Um, she was like, look, you're writing resumes for, you know, all of these people you know because the GFC had just been hit and, mm-hmm. you know, so many people were being made redundant. You're writing resumes and you're talking to everybody about how they need to be on LinkedIn. Um, why don't you start doing that as a job? And I was like, oh, yeah, I could actually make money for this. <laughs> you know, so I was a bit yeah. slow on the uptake, like it was her suggestion. Yeah. And um, and I, I thought, you know, this could be a really viable business. And then yeah. I started falling out of love with resumes. And we're going back, you know, 15 years now. Yeah. And so people like resume writer, is that even a thing? And then I killed off the resume writing side and was just doing LinkedIn profiles. And um, people were like, oh, and what else do you do? And I'm like, no, no, this is my business. People That's what I do. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. People couldn't believe. And, you know, my, my dad, my husband, a lot of people were quite critical of, of me running my own business. Like, what do you know about business? You know, you haven't got an MBA. You haven't got done this. Like, you haven't done that. <laughs> but I just couldn't let the idea go. And so mm-hmm. have I ever had goals? No, I haven't. I've always been micro ambitious. Um, and I've always focused on what are my strengths and what am I um, what am I very not good at um, less strong points mm. so um, I could never be promoted in recruitment beyond a certain level um, because I just can't I can't run a PL because I'm mathematically illiterate um, I know because I've got the psych test to show that like you know if maths was breathing I'd be dead so you know I'm never going to be in charge of a profit and loss sheet can't do budgeting um but I'm a really good sort of 2IC to the manager kind of thing and a great worker bee um so what are the things that make me happy and what can I not do I can't do accounting I need to have some level of detail in my work I need to have some people contact um you know, so just sort of thinking, and I use the Gallup strengths a lot with my clients, you know, to look at, yeah. you know, what 
makes you and you use disc do you use disc i much? use um strengths profile is what i'm using mostly at the moment it's uh it's really it's really good it's quite a quick tool but similar concept isn't it about understanding yeah. people's strengths yeah what are your strengths what are you good at yeah. and so instead of having a goal like i want to achieve this it's all about for me it's yeah. been about what are the things that make me happy and how can i make sure that i move my career to that so yeah. recruitment was starting to not make me feel happy yeah. and it also wasn't in alignment with my values because I'm very honest to a fault. And yeah. I just look people in the eye and say, you know, hey, come and buy this person when I'm like, you can use LinkedIn to find yourself, <laughs> you know. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Um, Doing yourself out of work, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think the thing with the strengths that I found interesting is that actually your it can be your strength, but you are doing it so much that it almost becomes a weakness, doesn't it? And you're exhausted by it. So I think that's a really good thing to to notice. Yeah. So what gives you energy? Um and not just what are you what are you good at, but what are you good at? And and it gives you energy. It fills yeah. the cup. It's yeah. you know, what would you do? Mm -hmm. Um you know if you won lottery tomorrow like yeah you know what are, what are the and not what's your dream job as in a title and it looks like this and it's defined yeah. like that, but what are the parts of your role that really make you happy yeah so I know one of the consultants I work for the CEO said to me you do not get bored just looking at LinkedIn all day I'm like no no <laughs> why would I but I think you're I'm just constantly learning about different people in different occupations so I had like the number one female professional in the mining industry. And in, like, that's amazing talking to all these people about these careers that I've never even thought of. Mm. Um, so how can that be boring? I'm, I'm talking to people all the time and understanding what it is they do. Yes. Yeah, it's fascinating, especially when you're interested in people. Yeah, definitely. Um, okay, a couple of comments. So Paul's saying common misconception that being confident is just something that people can do. It takes practice. It Good does. point. Gosh, um, yeah, you've got a wise man there. That's so true. Mm. And I think it's really important for everybody here to remember that um, because I think it's very relevant to creating content and to reaching out to people who you don't know on yeah. LinkedIn but you want to know. You know, when I said pick an industry or a region, yeah, yeah. you know, a lot of people are like, how do I just reach out to people? And I think it is a practice and it gets better with, with practice you just need to keep turning up and um you know it's like a muscle it, it grows over time yeah yeah muscle memory I think that's a good point about the in-person networking isn't it I know so many people tell me they hate networking at you know in-person events but I think LinkedIn's great for that isn't it because you can get to know people before you go there and then you've got something to talk about um it is and it's good on so many levels so I started um, my business when I was um at home before Zoom had ever been invented um, I don't know if we even had Skype back in 2010. I know we did about 2013, 14, but um, I don't know if we had it then. And so I loved that I could sit at home covered in baby vomit and, <laughs> and meet people, and I love yeah, that. Yeah. But some of my favourite people on LinkedIn are introverts um, mm. or they are like you, they're ambiverts in that if they're constantly in person, that's quite exhausting. Yeah, but yeah. being on LinkedIn, you can manage your energy and you can curate how you turn up. And I'm not talking about faking who you are, but I'm just talking about you can, you know, send messages to people, personalising invites to connect, and then you can yeah, respond yeah. to those in a way that's very thoughtful as opposed to, oh, my gosh, somebody's just walked up to me and started talking, what do I say? You know, you can actually give thought to it. Yeah. And, and so that's very good for um, the more reflective types who are great listeners but don't like being pushed into the limelight. Yeah, it's, I mean, and you can build pretty decent, deep relationships quite quickly as well, can't you? With things like voice messages, and, and we exchanged quite a lot of voice messages in the early days, didn't we? And uh, that was great because you get much more of a feel for people, I think, when you're hearing their voice. Mm, absolutely. Do you do video messages as well? Because Occasionally, John's yes. John does, doesn't he? Yeah. Oh, John, John Esperian, like I will never forget my first message from him. I mean, I'm sure it's sitting there way back yeah, <laughs> behind yeah. the wall of all of the voice messages I've left him over over the years. But he actually sent me a, a video and it was just so touching that somebody who, um, you know, was just so well known and held in such high esteem had taken mm. the time to send me a video message. Yeah. Uh, 
you know, and there's a really famous podcaster, Douglas Burdett, and he did exactly the same thing as well, sent me a video. Yes. And I was just, I know. And so now whenever I see his posts in the news feed, yeah. um, whether it's John's or, or Douglas Burdett's, um, you know, I'm instantly liking and commenting on it because yeah. that memory of the first impression is just so important. Yeah, and definitely. And networking in person, it's really hard to control all the variables around that, but we yeah. can control the variables when we're on LinkedIn. Yeah, I had one from Gillian actually a couple of days ago, Gillian McNee, and um, it was it was to do with this actually. I said that I noticed a bit of an anomaly, so I messaged Gillian, and she just sent me this Vimeo message back and kind of talked it all through. And it's lovely, isn't it, that people are actually taking the time out of the day to do that for you. Yeah. Uh, okay, so Jeannie's saying she agrees. She worked in hospitality off during uni, resilience, dealing with people, difficult priorities, people, and providing the service with professionalism. So yeah, brilliant. Thank you for that, Jeannie. Okay, so you just sort of touched on value. So, so do your do your values have an impact when you're looking for work? When you when you when you were looking for employed work, and I guess, and sort of the clients you take on now, they don't. They, they never don't. have. Really, okay. never have ever. Interesting. <laughs> ever, I've never looked at values. Um, okay, I've looked at attributes. Okay. So, um, because. Like, I think that values can show up in lots of different ways. So one of my yeah. core values is, is generosity, but that can show up in lots of different ways. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, and honesty, what is one person's honesty is not another person. Um, and because when I'm writing somebody's LinkedIn profile, it is a transactional relationship. Um, we do, I do keep in contact with people and I'm yeah. really excited to be catching up with some of them for coffee soon. Um, so it's really nice to actually start if a bit nerve-wracking to be kind of leaving the house and yeah. actually see people face-to-face. -face. Um, but I really look for specific attributes because yeah. I'm only with them for, you know, four, five, six sessions. Yeah. And I don't want to work with people who have certain attributes um, that just won't match my working style because they're not yeah. going to like me. Yeah. You know, I'm quite detailed. I really love providing work that not just that my clients like but that I'm really proud of and that's really yeah. important to me. So that means that I will agonise, like, you know, we'll go through the copy together and I will go, is this the right word? Is this the right word? Is that the right sentence? You know, yeah. is that accurate? Yeah. Uh, I think maybe we could swap that word out for that word, but I wanted to check with you. And very occasionally I'll misread the attributes and I'll get somebody who's just like, oh, yeah, it's fine. And I'm like, no, I'm sorry, I, I, no. I don't do that. I need you to read through this because this is how you are represented to the world. Yeah. So I'm looking for people of high detail who appreciate top quality. Um, you know, attributes are they're going to turn up on time um, you know, they like process because I'm very process orientated. Yeah. You know, those attributes are not there. Yeah. Um, it's fine. And so from a values perspective, I pick my friends for my values, but I need to like my friends. I, I need yeah. to love my friends and I do love yeah. my friends. Yeah. And I have many clients who I fall in love with and get almost crashes on. Yeah. My husband's like, oh, my God, if you've got a crash on another woman, I'm like, totally, she's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> you know? But yeah. um, I, I blush as I say that because it's just so true. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I do fall in love with some of my clients, but it, it is a transactional relationship. So I just need us to be able to work together yeah. really yeah. well. That's cool. So you've actually got th th that in common with Mark Deke, so the piano guy. So he was on a couple of weeks ago and he, I asked him the values question before we went live and he he said the same thing. He's like, I don't really know. I don't really care as long as they pay me. Uh, and <laughs> also um, as long as they're honest, I don't want people that yeah. say they're going to do something and then don't. So mm -hmm. yeah, interesting. That, But everyone else has kind of come up with what they've been talking about. So it's really. Yeah, yeah I think yeah. values has become quite um you know, like when I listen to my my 11 and 14 year old, um, you know, everybody's talking about values, and you've got to have your right values. And if you're not if you're not value aligned, then maybe they're bullying you and stuff like that. And I think it's as Jeannie beautifully said earlier, it is about that resilience and going, yeah. you know, um, what who could I work with if the money's right? And and let's have a big picture on this. This is not forever. Yeah. And so long as we can work together well. 
Yeah. Um, and when we can work together well and I'm saying something and they're saying something back and then, you know, so I'm putting out um, this is their profile, you know, what do you think, is this the right word? And we're bouncing ideas around and magic is happening and the profile is going from looking, if I do say so, pretty good to looking amazing. Like that is magic. You can feel yeah, yeah. it. It's just tangible and the air's crackling and they're like, yes, and I'm like, yes. You know, and in that moment we are, it doesn't matter if, we're completely values misaligned. It's it's magnet. It's yeah. incredible. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, I've just noticed we're already at the time we said we were going to end. So <laughs> that's just flown by. So I want to just really quickly ask you about uh, personal private posts on LinkedIn. So what's kind of your view on on that? So do you write stuff that's really personal and private? Do you advise your clients to do that? Do you stay away from it? Um, yes and no. Okay. So, I have posted about my journey with my dad dying um, from cancer and I will go very personal and very deep, providing I can link it back to what I do. So when okay. I talked about my dad dying and I wrote an article about it, um, actually it was posted by somebody else and I shared it, um, so I wrote it for them. But I, all through the article, I spoke about how I'd been flown to Perth to do some training and here's a you know copy of the flight ticket because my dad was like, I'm not going to see you because I'm dying and I don't want to be seen. Oh, wow. you know. And so I wrote this whole sort of blog and, mm. and we released it on Father's Day. Um, but all through it, I put work stuff um, just to, I don't know, because I, I just think you should always be mentioning, I need to always be mentioning Karen Tisdale LinkedIn profile writer, Karen Tisdale LinkedIn profile writer. Yeah. And I think posting stuff all over the place, people don't know what it is you stand for. So last year I had something pretty full on happen towards um, late last year and I was offline for like oh, five, six months mm. and largely offline. And it was it was big, right? Yeah. There is nothing about it on LinkedIn because yeah. I can't link that to what I do for a living. I don't want to become a poster girl for that. Um, it's I can't bring it into. Yeah. Sorry, I know we've, we've, I'm going way over time, but I just think that when you talk about a wide range of different topics, attention spans are really small. I think mm. you need to somehow bring it back to what you do, as mercenary as that sounds. Yeah, no, I agree. And the time's fine by me anyway, so thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Um Okay, we've got here Jeannie saying the art of listen to learn, not listen to respond. Oh, interesting. Yeah. yeah. Great. Okay. So uh, we'll kind of, uh, any advice, I guess, so just general advice. So I, I mentioned recruitment, but any, let's just talk about anyone who's looking to start their career. So what would you advise people to do when they're looking to start a career in a, any area? Set up your LinkedIn profile. Worry less about creating content. Yeah. And more about the right relationships. Yeah. Relationships are so important. And as the world becomes smaller because we're more interconnected, having a wide number of contacts, but making sure that it's deep. So yeah. I said it, don't go go deep, not wide. You know, like just make sure that you do pick an area and make sure that you really nurture those relationships and continue to build those relationships. That's what I meant by wide. Like, yeah, relationships are everything. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, really important. Mm. Okay, so just a little bit about what you do, Karen. So uh, <laughs> I, I know we've talked a bit about it. So I'll just put your um, your page up on the screen. So oops, I've got loads oh, of messages thank popping you. up. There. Oh, there you go. That's <laughs> very cool. Oh, you got messages. 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 So um, so I am a LinkedIn profile writer. I do also train sales teams um, on how to use LinkedIn um, to grow business. But yeah. my primary thing is writing LinkedIn profiles. You know, yeah. I, I love writing LinkedIn profiles. I do only uh, work with people in Australia. Um, I do have tons of free resources around writing yeah. profiles. So if anybody's listening to this and they're not in Australia, um, you know, and they want some free resources, I create content Um that answers people's questions. So yeah. if anybody has any any that wants some tips around writing their profile, I've got heaps of stuff. So Excellent. is that all on LinkedIn or do you use YouTube as well? No, I don't use YouTube. Okay. Um, I'm 
really lucky. Oh, I think I have a YouTube channel, but I think I've got like 75 su subscribers if I'm like that. And that's yeah. probably all my relatives, if I'm honest. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah, hardly anybody. So, yeah, just on LinkedIn and if people reach out to me, yeah, um, yeah, that would be great. Excellent. Thank you. So what's next in work? More, more of the same? No. Uh, yes and no. I'm going to okay. keep running LinkedIn profiles. Yeah. Um, but I have been writing profiles for um, business owners. Okay. Um, which I love, um, but I've been doing it for years now and um, I can do it blindfolded. Mm. And a lot of the work that's come my way in the last couple of years has been writing LinkedIn profiles for board directors. Okay. Um, so people who sit on boards. Yeah. Um, and it's just such exciting work, particularly, yeah. yeah, women on boards who are just really struggling to to be seen and have that seat at the table. It's just so exciting. So that's so I think for the next few years I'm going to be focusing on growing and, and developing a market more around LinkedIn profiles for board directors. Brilliant. Thank you. Uh, and as Michael says, get on LinkedIn. It's a great platform. It really is. Well, that's a good piece of advice. I yeah, run definitely. With definitely. Yeah. Thank you so much, um, yeah. everybody. And thank you, Sarah. Yeah, it's, it's been a amazing. Prom, especially at 7 a.m. in the morning. So um, That's cool. You. That's cool. That's good. So my, my last question was more, you know, just because I've got this vision of if you live in Sydney, you must be at the beach all the time. So how often do you go to the beach? <laughs> I used to go to the beach almost every weekend. Yeah. Um, but we are really lucky where we live. We have a swimming pool. Oh, and nice. for yeah. years, I have been in charge of the swimming pool. But last year, when the wheels fell off in my life for a set period, um, my husband um, took control of the swimming pool. He's like, this is so much work. I'm like, that's why it always looks like a swamp. So yeah. I've actually, I'm sorry, but I can't, I've slowed down in going to the beach and I yeah. only go to the beach like once every three, four weeks. Um and I'm now in my swimming pool all the time, which is why I have my hair like this, because I went for a swim before lunch because I could Nice. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Excellent. Gotta love Sydney, right? That's cool. Yeah. And what what is your favourite beach then? Palm Beach. I just Palm because beach. it's close to where I live. And okay. I I love it. I love Palm Beach. Yeah, excellent. Okay, so Jeannie's saying thank you, lady. So thank you. Thank you very much to everyone that's been watching. Thank you so much, Karen, for coming on. It's been really great to have an actual proper chat. Um, so for the future shows, I've got people booked up until the end of May now, which is great. Really, really good. Um, next Thursday at one, which is my normal time for, for being live, I'm live at John Asperian's networking gig in Bristol. So this is going to be brilliant. So we've got about six people coming on. So we're going to have kind of mini career stories. I'm not sure how it's going to work yet, live and live, but it'll be good. <laughs> it'll be and amazing. It'll be really cool. It's good people know good people. And so yeah. Even and John is very in exactly yeah, yeah. And, the, and then the following week I'm back normal format with uh, Kevin D Turner who's based out in Dallas so yeah. thank you very much again so thank you I could just see one more comment okay so Paul saying uh, interesting and entertaining as always thank you Paul oh what a good man <laughs> <laughs> so thanks very much and um, see you all next week thank you Karen thank you